Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today I'm very excited to introduce you to the new Topaz Impression. It's our latest released program that turns your photos into different types of paintings, drawings, sketches, and even more than that, and does it with very authentic results. I'm very excited about it. I've been playing with it for a while now and love some of the results I'm able to get, so I'm excited to introduce you guys to it. At the beginning here, I'm just going to show you a few results that I worked on in Topaz Impression and was able to get very quickly. So we'll go over some different looks that you're able to achieve within the program. And then we'll go into Topaz Impression, take a look at the interface, and take a look at the different presets and preset collections. And then we'll delve a little deeper into the actual sliders and parameters that are in each preset and what each slider does to, or to your image in the program. This first image is really funny, actually. Um, I here's the before. I went in with the desire to create a actually photorealistic or pictorial type of image, which is um, a, a painting that actually looks very much like a photograph. Um, but this is what I came up with in the end because that's one good thing that impression really does for you. It really inspires you to go in different directions and this is obviously not a very photorealistic painting but this was uh, the result I came out with and I was really happy with it. So then I took this um, image of the dock in and I actually started from the point where this image ended and that's how I kind of got inspired to move forward with this image. Topaz Impression, like all of Topaz products, has sticky settings. So when you take the next image in, it's going to apply the last used settings, so the settings I used with this image, onto the next image. And so I kind of got inspired there and I just moved on from there. I changed my brush stroke to be a different type of brush stroke, changed my brush size and uh, worked with the lighting a lot and, and the colors and came up with this result. So both of these were very um, uh, personalized and customized settings. But now we're going to kind of get into quick uh, preset driven changes or results. Um, actually, I worked on this one quite a, a, a little bit. Um, this is actually, here's the before and after. This was using the smudged two preset located in the pastel and charcoal collection and I don't think I showed the before here here's before and after these results are just awesome to play with um, you can get all sorts of realistic results within the program so here is a nice soft watercolor uh, effect that I applied to this image here's the before I love this image, I love the perspective and the subject, but the colors were very bland and just increasing the saturation was just not working for me. So I thought, you know, this kind of gives a nice uh, or kind of calls for a nice watercolor effect in my mind. So I was able to apply that and get this result very quickly. This image is of an old stone hallway with these windows here on the left and over here on the right just because of the texture and the way that the sediment was kind of going down the walls and it kind of looked like chalk on walls and we now have within the newest version of impression I will talk about that in one second different chalk presets so I applied I believe it was the concrete chalk preset one and worked from there to get this result we also have some kind of interesting modern or non-traditional uh, effects and that most of those can be found within the modern collection. So this particular image which started out here, I actually got inspired by the brick here and I thought what if I actually took it in and applied a brick preset. And that's what I did within the uh, modern collection, I believe it was Urban Street Art, one of those presets that I started with and moved on from there. One of the great things about impression is, or one of the things that really brings out some realistic characteristics is the ability to add in texture and not only add in texture but uh, really determine the strength and the scale of that texture that you're adding in. So all of these that you see have some sort of texture in the background which really leans itself into being more realistic than other programs might provide. This is also in the modern collection, it's called Liquid Lines, and I believe it's the Liquid Lines 2 preset. Here we have um, Da Vinci Sketch preset 1, and this is going to be located in the Ancient collection. Let's see here, this uses the Smudged 4 preset and no nothing else was applied. Here's before and after. 
This image uses one preset, it's the palette knife and oil preset. There's a lot of texture going on here, a lot of buildup on the paint. If you scroll into these images like we're going to be doing, you can see there's a lot of texture going on. So again, this is palette knife and oil, and this is before and after. This is a one preset change as well. This is the Turner Sunset 2 preset. Here's before and after. And last but not least, this is a portrait, um, a Rembrandt portrait one, I believe is the preset where I started. Here's the before image. I applied the preset and did work on it, changed a couple sliders, some contrast sliders and brush uh, stroke size sliders to get this result. So let's hop on into the image or into the impression program now. And as I kind of hinted at, this is the most uh, recent version of Topaz Impression. We have yesterday released Topaz Impression version 1.1. So it is a minor upgrade, but that minor upgrade, which is free to Topaz Impression version 1 owners, has a lot of very cool updates in it, including, I believe it's something like 65, 64, 65 presets that myself and RC um, created. Let me open up the program here. In addition, it has different viewing options for you. It has some different preferences on the back end that we'll take a look at. And um, just some cool usability features in there as well. So I'll show you that here in just a second. When you first open Topaz Impression, for the first time, it will ask you for your key. That will pop up first. Or you can use it as a 30-day trial. So you make that decision right then and there. Um, I have a key, so I'm already activated. So the next screen that you'll see is this screen that says, Welcome to Topaz Impression, take the tour. If you are having any questions after this session or you want to get refreshed, go ahead and take the tour of uh, Topaz Impression. It'll just kind of walk you through everything. So here we, ha we have select an effect and see how it looks on your image. And then you click the effect again to fine tune it. And that's how you get into your sliders and parameters. Now it shows you your parameters area, and this is where you can really customize your effect. You can choose your brush, um, you can uh, change the brush size and brush uh, paint volume, color, etc. And that's in the stroke category where you do all of that. And then you can come in and really work with your color. And this color panel is quite deceiving. You think it's pretty simple and it won't do much because, I mean, it's basically an HSL, um, HSL panel where you can change your overall hue, saturation, and, and um, lightness and light, luminosity. Um, and then it breaks it down into the eight different color channels here that you see. But this is much more powerful than you think, and um, we'll take a look at some of the different really cool things you can do in this color um, panel area. Then you go down into your lighting and this very authentic lighting effects. This is where you work with your brightness and contrast and your vignette. The cool thing about this is even your brightness within the lighting, it's not actually affecting the overall lightness or darkness of your image. It is changing the brightness of your highlights while still trying to maintain some of those um, realistic shadows or the vignettes that you've applied. So it does it in a very um, intelligent way. So we're going to take a look at that as well. And um, you can choose the light direction, which is really important when you're working with really heavily stylized paint, such as impasto or um, something that has a lot of height to it. The light direction and, and how the light is theoretically hitting your, or internally simulating how it's hitting your canvas or paper or whatnot, really changes the way your image feels. So that light direction area is very cool too. And lastly, we have our texture, and we talked about that already, where you can actually change the strength and size and choose different textures. So that's the quick tour. Let's go ahead and take a look at the overall interface now. I am going to go ahead and start over here on the left-hand side. Like I said, whenever you pop into Topaz Impression, it's like the rest of our programs, you'll see some uh, applied settings right away. But within Impression, instead of um, opening up to the sliders, it opens up to a preset list. So over here, we are looking on the right-hand side at our featured list of presets. So you can just click on those and they will apply. And you can take a look at all the different ones that we say, um, you know, 
hey, check this out. This is one of the effects that you can do. So that's what's on the featured list. I believe there's 12 or 13 presets that we just kind of uh, chose to show you the different types of effects you're able to achieve within the program in a very quick way. So all different sorts of things going on here. Um, watercolors, more modern stuff, and you can check that out on the right-hand side. But let's take a look over here on the left first. Here's where you're going to have your menu options. Um, you can access your user guide through the help um, on Mac. It's a little bit different, but it is the help tab still. And this is where you can get your user's manual. You can actually take that product tour again. You can access um, our support page. And you can change your preferences as well. You also have different viewing options that you can look at. Um, here, fit, fill, and maximum, but you now have within Impression version 1.1, which is available online. You can download it from our page right now if you want to take a look at it. Um, we have different viewing options, so you can look at the overall effect, and then you can look at the before and afters in several different ways. So you can um, click on those different ways here, these different icons, to see the before and after of your image. And then you can click and still see the after over here on the right. So all these different new viewing options, this is really great. And then within uh, version 1.1, we've improved our zoom tool ability. I'm going to go back to the main window here. So now instead of just having a few different options, you still have the different presets, uh, preset viewing areas, which you can click on here. Basically, it's going to go from a fill preset to fill your screen. It's going to zoom in a little bit, and then it's going to go to 100%. But now you also have the ability just to take this little zoom bar and go in and out, or you can click on the little arrows here on the right, or you can just type in the percentage if you want to see your image at 50%. Just type in 50, and it will jump to 50% for you. You can still uh, toggle back and forth between your um, original and your preset by clicking on the original button over here on the top left. Let's scroll out. You can also click on your space bar and then click on your space bar again to be able to see the effects. And then see the original. Same thing with your left mouse button. Down here on the lower left we have some blending options that we'll talk about a little bit later, but let's go over here on the right now. So it's a very simplified um, user interface as far as the different tools that you see right away. You just have these different viewing options and then you have your preset list. With your presets, if you come up to the featured area and click on the two little arrows here, it will pull down a list of different categories of presets. You can look at all of the effects within the whole program, including your own presets that you've created in this All Effects tab, or you can look at the different categories that we've broken it into. So you can look at the Ancient category, which, like I had mentioned, has different um, things like cave drawing type of presets, cracked fresco, those da Vinci sketches, things that may remind you of more ancient art. And then we get into our impressionistic category, um, which is where Topaz Impression came from. So we have some great presets in here. And you can just check them out. You can also use your up, uh, your arrow keys to scroll through the presets as well, which I tend to do much more often than just clicking, because I like to see all of the different effects and see the variety of things that are going on. All right, and then we have our modern category, and this is where you're going to see things such as the abstraction uh, presets that we have available for you, uh, that liquid line preset I was uh, had showed you in the. Uh, examples at the beginning of the session, uh, something called Stamp Rush, which I love these effects. It's kind of like pointillism on steroids. And then let's see here, we have our urban street art effects down here, and this is where I started out with that uh, car image. I just added the saturation back in and worked from there. Then we have our painting preset, and this is where you'll see a lot of, or the majority of the new presets within version 1.1. You'll still see the ones that were there in version 1, of course, so like Chiriosuro and other painting presets, but now you'll see a lot that mention different artists, uh, famous artists' names as well, and certain paintings. So they got dancers. Uh, we have that. Uh, let's see here, Edward Hopper. Going to see a little bit more buildup of that paint, a little bit more contrasty. We have some 
special presets in here that were sent to us by some of our guest presenters that we've had in the past and some of our kind of uh, Topaz Guru users. So for example, we have our Monet Impasto by Joel Wolfson and um, you know, our Oil Glaze by Blake Rudis. If you follow the Topaz webinars, then you've probably seen both of them here presenting for us. So it's kind of fun to have those in there. Then we have a lot more down here um, that go from, here we have the Sarat Afternoon which really works with that pointillism type of effect. If you scroll into any of these um, presets, you really start to see the individual brush strokes, which is uh, what we're going to be talking about now. And so for this particular preset, you can see that they're really taking advantage of that pointillism effect. Um, and so you'll just see kind of dots as your main brush stroke. Let's see here. Then we have Turner Storms, Turner Sunset, really taking that type of look from the Turner images and, and trying to simulate that in the preset itself. Let's see here. You may have noticed when I zoomed in to the image, this navigation window that popped up on the upper right here, this is also new to version 1.1. So whenever you scroll in, and I am using my mouse wheel to scroll in right now, you can also scroll in using um, your shortcut keys and um, to zoom in, of course, over here. But I'm just using my mouse wheel. And then um, you're able to move the image around just by grabbing it with your hand. You can also come up to this navigation window and move the box around and you'll see it uh, move in your actual main view area. If you don't like this navigation window here in this top right corner, if you feel like it's kind of um, blocking your view, you can quickly just get rid of it by clicking on the top right of the navigation window. It's a little circle with a minus, and that will hide it, and then you can click on the plus, and it will bring it back out. So that's another feature within version 1.1. All right, so let's take a look at the actual sliders now. Let's go to my presets and go to the preset. Actually, we'll start where I started with um, this image. I really wanted to, when I, when I saw this image, I wanted to make it a little bit moody, but I wanted to keep the realism going. So we have a new category within version 1.1. It's called the pictorial category. And what you'll see there is kind of pictorial effects, which pictorial is basically very, a very simple ex, uh, definition is a photography or a photographers that um, use the pictorial effect, what they're trying to do is kind of confuse the viewer, not confuse the viewer, but they, they're adding so much effect into their photographs that it kind of starts to look like paintings or drawings, but they come from photographs. So I thought that would be a really cool category to add. And then um, we kind of added some photorealistic type of um, painterly effects as well in here, which is kind of the other direction. Painters who are trying to make their paint, paintings or um, artists using any medium trying to make their uh, their art look more like photography and very realistic. So that's uh, this new category. So I kind of wanted to keep it in that realism and just add a little bit of mood. We have something called Warm Haze 1, which kind of does a little obscure uh, um, effects to it, kind of gives it a nice hazy effect. But And from a distance, it looks somewhat like a photograph, but when you scroll in to the image, you start to see a lot of texture there and you realize that it's actually um, taking out a lot of detail, almost has a watercolory type of painting um, brush to it. And I got to this point and I thought, you know what, I like it but I don't like it enough, I want to change it around. So then I opened it up and the way that you go into the parameters and sliders is you hover over the preset and then you can just click on the preset uh, little, or the slider icon that was right there in the middle. I'll show you that one more time. Let's go back to the preset list here and you'll see that icon right in the middle. You can also get to it by clicking on the slider icon to the right of the uh, category lists or right in the middle. So there we are. When you do that it will open up into your slider list. I'm just going to shut these down so we can go through them individually and the way that I just shut them down was just to click on the actual uh, top of the panel and it'll just open and close it. This first one is the stroke panel. So when I open this into, um, when I was working with this image earlier, I wanted to just kind of check out different things such as uh, ch what changing the brush stroke would look like. 
um, the paint volume, how opaque it might be. So we're just going to run through all of these different slider definitions real quick. Within stroke, you'll first see a brush type area where you can come in and you can select the different brush types. Now I'm going to go ahead and reset everything and just start from the beginning. By default, it's going to apply type 1 brush. So let's go ahead and scroll in and you'll see that applied. So you'll see some type of an effect whenever you reset all. But then you can come in and change the brush stroke to get different effects. Now the cool thing about Topaz Impression is that it uses actual brush strokes that were created here in Dallas and Austin especially. Darcy worked on these I know quite a bit. Um, really giving our developers all sorts of different types of brush strokes that they actually plugged into the back end of the program. So all these brush strokes came from actual brushes which is something that's pretty unique to Topaz Impression. So when you get to things like the um, presets that start to look like drawings and they really have a realistic um, result, that's, that's why. It's because it's pulling from actual color pencils and smudges and things like that. So it's really fun to play with and to check out the different types that we have available for you. So once you find a brush stroke that you like or you think you might enjoy, you can move on and come down and actually make it your own with the brush size or the brush parameters. Here we have brush size. As you take this up, it'll increase your overall brush size. And you can get really high with those brushes or you can take that down. It's not going to be a uniform brush size. You'll see that in areas like the sky, your brushes are going to be much larger because there's less detail there than they are, let's say, on the tree here. If you scroll in, you can see these brushes uh, are much smaller in comparison to the larger brush. I just really took that up so that I could kind of show you exactly what I'm talking about there. So it's a, a variation of brush sizes, but overall it will increase your brush sizes. Then you have paint volume, and paint volume is great, especially for um, brush strokes that have been or brought in that are oil type strokes, where you have a lot of um, ability to kind of build on top of each other and get that oil painter, oil painting type of look. As you take this up, you'll really start to see it, um, the volume of the paint increase and come out at you. Now this takes into account a lot of different things um, as well. This isn't, this is taking into account the lighting and anything like that. So all this can be changed as you move along. But we'll leave the paint volume kind of up and so that we can see a little bit of uh, variation within our strokes there. Then we have paint opacity and paint opacity will really blend the paint in and you'll start to not kind of it makes it more opaque so you can see through the paint to the picture itself or to the background itself, excuse me, or it builds and builds and builds and makes it um, where you're not able to actually see through to the paint strokes below even um, and especially not the actual paper or the background. So as this um, opacity is decreased, you'll start to see the brush strokes below the other brush strokes and it'll blend a little bit more evenly throughout when you take that down. Then you come down to your stroke width and stroke length and here you can just change the actual stroke itself. So if you want to make a, let's say a really long stroke, you can take your stroke length all the way to the right and you want to make it really long but also really thin, you can take that stroke width all the way to the left. And now we have an almost pencil-like stroke happening because it's a very long, thin brush stroke. So that's really how you control that brush stroke to the degree um, that you see in all these presets. That's how they were um, created. Let's go ahead and take that down a little bit. I also want to take my brush stroke down. And we get down to something called spill. And spill is exactly kind of what it sounds like. It, as you take this up, you'll start to see the paint literally start to spill over the edges of um, the edges of your image. So it starts to give it a little bit more of, again, a more authentic results of kind of getting a little paint and not so rigid lines, really starts to bring in more realistic um, painting effects. 
or painting characteristics. You can also take that away or just put it on just a touch just to get a little bit of a rougher edge then smudge is actually going to smooth out the different lines and really um, uh, that's how I get the liquid lines preset. Let's scroll in so we can really see what the smudge is doing here. So as you take your smudge up, again, it's going to blur and kind of smooth the edges of the strokes. And it starts to, as you really push it up, it's going to start kind of curling and making wavy motions along the, um, the brush stroke pattern. So it kind of gives it a dreamy effect as well. But just using it a little bit will just start to blur the edges of your paint, uh, your paint strokes just a little bit to kind of get a softer effect, which I really enjoy. I'm going to take this back down. Then we get down to coverage. And coverage is something I tend to use, I'm finding, with more watercolors, things where you start to see a lot of the background paper, where it's, because, you know, with um, paintings and drawings, that you're usually the medium that you're using is paper or canvas or something and more with drawings you'll see the edges of the paper and so I think that's kind of where this coverage slider idea came from as you take this down it's going to give you less and less coverage and then you have your coverage transition so it's similar to the way that a vignette would work except it's going to bring in the background and you can choose your background and background paper down here in the texture area so you can really get a um, different type of an effect In addition to being able to change the transition of your coverage, you can, you, you can now, with version 1.1, choose where you want your coverage center to be. So all you do is you click this little dot and move it around, and that's where the center point for this coverage will be, and that's where most of the, um, that's where it'll start to spread out and be, begin to get less covered. I'll leave it right in the middle for now. And that is the stroke category. Moving on to the color parameters, here we have um, our HSL panel, basically. Here we can change our overall hue, and it's going to change all the different colors and um, hues at once. You can change your overall saturation. It'll work on all colors within your image and your overall lightness. And this is going to work on the overall image itself, lightness. So. If you add in overall lightness or brightness and you have some sort of heavy vignette going on, it will actually take that vignette up. So if you're looking just to take the actual painting versus the vignettes that you might have added in, go into your lighting and work on your brightness instead. That's just a little quick tip. But anyways, um, here we are with our overall lightness. The very cool thing about this panel is that you can break it down into the actual different colors. So, but another very cool thing is as you scroll over, you can see exactly which channel is going to, uh, where it's going to affect. So, for example, as I scroll over my blue swatch here, you'll see all of these cross hatchings um, come up over the sky. I'm scrolling in so you can see it in red there covering the sky. So you know that um, whenever you change, let's click on it, whenever you change anything within this blue option, my blue hue, it's now going to affect that whole area where we saw those cross hatches. Now the importance um, of this ab ability to kind of see exactly where you're going to affect is when you get to, um, let's go back to so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to my presets and I'm going to apply the preset that I saved that I got initially. But look down here in the uh, foreground in the field area. You'll see there's a lot of purple there, there's a lot of yellow, there's a lot of blue. Here's the original image. If I didn't know that um, this was green, um, you know, I wouldn't know that that's where I need to go to actually change the colors of this purple field. <laughs> so that's where these cross hatches really come into play. If I scroll over my green swatch here, you'll see all those red lines come up over that field. So I know I can click there and that's where I'm getting that purple color. And I can change my green hue. And say, oh, wow, okay, it's actually coming from my green uh, channel versus the purple channel. So that's really why those cross hatches are cool. Um, 
But you can see within Topaz Impression how powerful this HSL panel really can be, especially with changing the hues, which can give you all sorts of different colors um, and bring in uh, bring in colors that you weren't even that aren't actually there. You're introducing a whole new color to that area. So maybe I want to go into my yellow and change the yellows, and I'm going to see a completely different result by doing that. So that hue slider is really cool to use within Topaz's impression, especially when you're getting into more um, those painterly style, heavy painting, not so photorealistic type of paintings. You also have saturation and lightness for each and every color channel, so that's very cool. Let's go ahead and move on to the lighting. Lighting is going to control the different lighting aspects of your image from the way that um, a light is uh, hitting or it's simulating the way a light might hit your canvas or piece of paper to the actual contrast of the image. So if you want to um, increase the contrast, very easily done here. If you want to add a vignette, you have a vignette and vignette transition. You do have a vignette going on this image already. So as I increase that vignette, you'll see it really start to come into the edges. You can change your vignette center the same way that you can change your coverage center in the little gray box, just moving the little um, dot around to change the center point. You can also change the transition similarly. So it can be a softer transition from the middle point to the edge of the vignette, or it can be a much harsher, more contrasty transition like you see here. Let's see here. The brightness, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but let's say we have a pretty harsh transition here. And you can see it's really dark on the edges. Let's say I want to get this interior area brighter. I can come in and actually change my brightness, and it's not going to change my vignette as much as if I change my overall lightness in my color panel. So that's really where you'll see the difference between the brightness and the lightness. I know that I had that question right off the bat. I'm like, what's the difference here? This seems to be really controlling the brightness as well. But that's where you'll see the difference. The overall lightness within the color panel will control um, everything, the whole image. Brightness only really controls that lighting aspect, and that's why it's in the lighting panel. All right, let's take that vignette back down. All right, here we are. And now we have our light direction. Now this is really important whenever we have really heavy paint strokes and lots of texture to your paint. So let's change our paint strokes here, maybe to more oil. Type. There we go. And we'll scroll in to take a look at these strokes, these really big strokes up in the sky. Come back down to our light direction. Right now it's coming from the upper right. So you'll see in these strokes that it's simulating a light coming from the upper right of the canvas or the um, paper that it's painted on. And you'll see that light kind of um, coming that direction, but then let's go ahead and move it over to the upper left. And so now you'll see that light lighting against the different strokes and all the different um, textures and lines within each stroke are really affected by this light direction. You can really change an overall feeling of your image with this light. One thing that I like to do sometimes is to put it right there directly in the middle and get a very flat effect, so almost like there's no light, and you can get some very cool effects that way as well. But let's go ahead and go back up towards the right, because light direction not only affects the um, direction of light hitting the uh, paint strokes, it also is going to affect the way your texture looks, especially when you're working with texture like uh, canvas or let's say that brick texture we showed in an example earlier, you really start to see why that light direction affects that. Let's open up both the lighting and the texture. And here we have our texture. Texture is going to have the same type of um, same type of look here as choosing your brush stroke. You can come in and you can choose your texture. And as we scroll over each one, it'll tell you what it is. Our, all our different paper textures are named paper one, two, three, four. Same thing with the canvas. So currently we have a paper, but I'm, I'm really wanting a canvas texture versus a um, 
versus a paper. So all I need to do is scroll up in this texture area and find my canvas. And they are alphabetized, so it's pretty easy to find. And I like Canvas 5. You'll start to get your own favorites on as far as textures and brush strokes and things like that. But I know I love Canvas 5, so I'm just going to click on Canvas 5. And it's going to be applied to my image. Now, you saw it applied. It is really strong, way too strong of a texture for me at this stage. So I'm going to go ahead and take that strip down. And it becomes much more realistic texture for me. Let me scroll out. And you can see that texture applied now underneath. I'll take that strength all the way out so you see it go away. And we'll bring it back in. And now look what happens when I change my light direction. It's not only going to affect my paint strokes, it's also going to affect the texture, the way the texture looks in the painting as well. Lastly, within texture, we have um, the size uh, slider. And this is going to allow you to change um, the, the scale of your texture. So let's say you're dealing with an image that's 18 by 24 inches. You don't necessarily want a texture that's supposed to be applied to a 4 by 6 inch image because then the texture is going to look huge <laughs> and it's not really going to look realistic if you put it on an 18 by 24 inch canvas or something like that or so you can come in and you can change that um, size very easily let me go ahead and take that strength really up high so you can see it so we've taken that size up really high and now that scale as we take that lower it's going to get smaller and smaller so you can apply the right scaled texture to your image to get the right effect for you and that's really helping to get those authentic results as well. Lastly, we have our background. And this is really important, especially when it comes to things like that Da Vinci sketch. Let's go ahead and take a look at that particular preset just while looking at this particular uh, parameter within the program, just so you can get the overall effect very quickly. Let's take our featured list and just click on Da Vinci sketch and click on in there. And you'll see in the texture, my background is this brown color. And that's what you see peering through all of the sketch work here. If I change my background color, just click on it, you'll see a color chooser here come up. Let's say I want something that has a little bit more redness to it. So I'm just going to take that hue slider and move it to the left towards red. And I'm going to get more orangey type of paper. Press OK. And that's now applied on my background paper. So you can choose that background very uh, quickly. The texture is still going to be applied to the background. So you can come in and essentially choose the right color paper or canvas. Let's say, let's do that canvas 5 again. And I'm going to scroll in just so you can check it out. Take that strength way up. So it's not only affecting, that texture is not only affecting um, just the area where the brush strokes are, but the overall canvas itself. So that really helps, again, to get that more authentic result. So that is uh, kind of the quick yet thorough look into all of the different parameters here within Topaz Impression. Again, Topaz Impression here is just to help you turn your photos into a different medium and really get a more impressionistic and, and um, artistic creative flair to them very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some of the questions coming through, but I just want to show you really quickly because I saw the question come earlier. They wanted to kind of see the settings for this particular look that I was able to achieve. So let's go ahead and go on in there. And again, this is before and after. Before and after. So with for this particular look and this image, I chose Type 4 preset. And I had a um, pretty large brush size, but I actually came in and modified that brush size by taking the width and length down to where I wanted them to. So I decreased the brush size manually to kind of create my own looking brush. 
paint volume is uh, pretty high, so you see a lot of um, texture in that paint, kind of building on top of each stroke is building on top of the next. The opacity is is pretty high, so you actually see each individual stroke there. If I wanted it to blend a little bit better, I would take that paint opacity down, and you'd see a much more smooth, much more blended painting. Uh, painting style. Uh, the spill is all the way down. I didn't want a lot of spill because spill was already happening with these brush strokes themselves within the tree and the edges just by the nature of the stroke. So sometimes that spill is just a little bit too much in certain instances. If you feel like you clicked on a preset and it's like, oh, there's so much dirt and smudginess and I don't want color there, it's probably because the spill slider has uh, been increased. So just go into the presets, take that spill slider down and you'll really clean up those edges and get a more realistic um, or more preferable edge for you. Uh, let's see here, smudges all the way down. I really wanted to uh, get kind of more detailed brush strokes versus blending them into one another and I wanted full coverage on my canvas which I chose within my texture so I have no, I have my coverage all the way at one. Then within the color, that's really where you're seeing a lot of the changes from this uh, before image to the after. I just went in and I played. So within the red hue, red, I've changed all the different hues all around. I knew that I wanted to decrease this um, blue of the sky. So in my blue, I went in and I just took that blue saturation down to kind of give it a little bit more of an desaturated gray cloudy look, um, kind of get it a little bit more moody. I knew that I wanted to get some color into the lighter part of the clouds here on the horizon line, which were not producing anything but white strokes, and I thought, okay, how can I do that? Because I don't know what color the program thinks that this is. And so I, what I did is I just scrolled over my different swatches to see when that horizon line area would pop up Oop, and there it did. So it's actually the aqua sliders that are going to affect kind of that um, horizon line clouds. So I clicked there and I really changed the hue around and played with that until I found one that I liked but I'll show you kind of what I did. As you switch that around it'll just change those hues and it starts to give you that artistic um, ability just to like create your own vision and I thought what if we go a little bit more towards purple of a horizon line clouds and really kind of bring out some of those flowery purples too and was able to do that very quickly by changing the hue and then increasing the saturation a little bit. Another trick as well because a lot of times especially when you're dealing with highlights in these um, in your photographs when you're working with them as paintings or different mediums, you really want to bring a little bit more depth. Even though it's a highlight, you want some sort of definition in that area to make it look like paint strokes at least or um, see some things. So play with your lightness as well for each of those channels. I tend to go down in the highlighted areas to really bring in some texture and um, really show off those strokes within those areas like you would see in um, a lot of people's paintings so uh, that lightness slider seems to be really important to me as well especially in this particular um, result. After doing all of that color work I went into lighting and I didn't do too much with the brightness but I got it very contrasty without the contrast really um, it was still beautiful, I just wanted it to have a little bit more depth to it, a little bit more um, kind of darker tones within the shadows, so increasing the contrast will quickly give you some nice highlights and lowlights. Decreasing the contrast is awesome for certain things as well. It's going to really bring out all the different colors that are in your image, um, unless you have a gray sky. Let's see here. Oh, I know why it's doing that. Probably all my lightnesses are down, that's why. Yes, so when you decrease the contrast, you'll really start to see a lot of different tones come out that you didn't necessarily know were there, um, which is a lot of fun, especially when working with more subtle uh, painting styles, such as watercolor, things that might not have as much deep, intense hues like oil paints or something like that. So for this particular image, I wanted to give it more of an oil painting effect, and so I really tried to get those um, 
more intense tones in my shadows by increasing my contrast. I did put on some vignette here and the reasoning behind that was just because um, I wanted to create a moodier kind of stormier effect and just adding in vignette really helped me to get kind of a darker sky, add in a little bit more mood, but I just didn't add it in too much because I didn't want it to look like a photographic vignette, more of just um, a painting choice that I made uh, during this process. But it's kind of a cool way to be able to get some um, focus in on your area, just like in, in photography. So that's the lighting area. And then in the texture, I think I have, I have it on paper because initially I started off with a pictorial, uh, very photorealistic type of preset. And that's what the texture used. And I just continued with that. I thought it looked good here. And I didn't change the background at all from the original preset. But those are the settings that I used for this particular look. Thank you so much for joining us here today for the introduction to Topaz Impression. I hope this gave you a good insight into the program on not only the different effects and looks you can get from Topaz Impression, but really what's happening behind the scenes and how these um, true brushstrokes have been incorporated into the program to create these more authentic results that you see here. Thanks again for joining us here today. Thank you to Darcy and Ryan for helping to answer questions, and I hope you're able to uh, join us for the next webinar. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.